So Austin, thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to talk about uh, filmmaking. You have a film uh, out uh, that you made as well. I mean, I was looking at your, I was just looking at your resume here and you've done, you're like a jack of all trades. You, you've, you've produced music, you've done music videos, you're acting and directing and producing. I mean, you just, you, you seem to do it all, sir. Well, that's how you learn, right? <laughs> that's the, you know, that's the good part of uh, doing it all is that then you can step in if need be. And that's kind of been part of my process is in learning. It's just been you know, doing it. So, and uh, we recently got, oh, go ahead. Oh, I said, you know, trying it out, practicing. I spent a lot of time fucking shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh well I uh, and you've got a, a film uh that uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you was Sweet Killing Machines. I'm a big uh supporter of Wisconsin stuff in general, especially creative and arts and that. And so when uh a mutual friend of ours uh, uh put me in touch with you, I was like I saw where this was shot. And I'm like oh I've got to watch it. And then after I watched, it, I was like I've got to talk to Austin because uh the film. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, now, some of my viewers and listeners may not be familiar with what Sweet Killing Machines is about. Would you be able to give a little synopsis of? Yeah, it's a pretty slow burn kind of art house uh, crime comedy about two hitmen who meet for the first time and they spin, they get put together in a hotel suite the night before a hit and it's most of the story takes place in the hotel room and it's sort of just like in my mind what I was creating was what would happen if you know like you were a hitman right and you get put in a room with and you're just like waiting so like it's you know a lot of conversation and like then some debauchery or whatever <laughs> comes about and uh yeah so um it's uh it's it's not a lot of action i think some people from the title have have been like uh that was not very action packed <laughs> <laughs> indeed indeed it, it was meant to not be but um yeah it's a uh, but but it's an fun, interesting fun art film. <laughs> i was gonna say it's an interesting concept very character driven uh, and I enjoyed the dialogue in that because uh, you still you still managed to make it interesting in a number of ways, I will say, uh, either through camera angles, conversations or some uh, post production work like with puppets. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so what made you want to do this? I mean, you, you've worked on you've directed a number. I was looking up. You've directed a number of music videos, a couple of shorts. What made you want to decide to do? sweet killing machines uh i was hanging out with a a friend and um he asked if i wanted to go just like shoot some random clips or something in a in a hotel room and i was like well how about if we just like write a short something or another and then uh you know script it and like actually produce it and do it right with lighting and good sound and stuff and so i started it was kind of originally just going to be like a fun little 25 minute thing or something like that. And then I, I didn't feel like in writing kind of where planning it out. Right. Like I, I felt like, oh, this is just going to feel really unfinished. So I asked them if they would want to do a full length feature. And, <laughs> um, yeah. So then I was able to kind of like complete this story that I felt like could be told in, in this situation. And um, so that, that's, yeah, that's kind of how it came about, I guess. <laughs> uh, now, when did you film this? Was this during COVID that you came up with this or? Let's see. I filmed it last year. It oh, okay. been, um, Feb. So I, I wrote it in, november of 2022 mm -hmm. and then i filmed it february 4th um oh, we yeah. so part of the uh difficulty in filming this was that it was originally intended to be a short and i only had so much budget for it right which is sure. pretty much almost nothing and um then 
I had rented the hotel suite for a couple nights, but then in making this a longer thing, it, you know, became like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to need the room for long, you know, like I'm going to need more time. <laughs> yep. Um, and in fact, I think originally I rented it for one night and then shortly after I was like, oh, I'm going to need it for another night. So got another night. And then I was like, man, I think we're going to need three nights, <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't get three nights because the room was booked already by oh. the time I figured that out. So, um, I just, uh, we basically did two 16, uh, like, I don't know, 14 hour days or something Ooh. in this room, uh, the, the female, in the movie she flew in from la and we only had it for one day so we had to first night make sure we got all of her dialogue done um so it was like uh w one day basically the outside stuff was done and then two days we did all the inside the hotel uh, and, room stuff in february in wisconsin that had to be a challenge in itself to shoot <laughs> Yeah, so it was negative two on the day that we were going to shoot. So it was supposed to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But on Friday, the the guy that I had written this part for uh, ended up flaking. Oh. <laughs> he, he, he had another excuse in a line of excuses that had kind of started to feel suspect throughout the week. And so mm. we, we ended up getting an understudy. Uh, Matthew Kenner is the person who uh, took his part the very last minute. Um, but we basically were like, Hey, we're starting to feel like this guy might not make it or something, <laughs> you know? So, uh, but he, that guy kept reassuring us everything was fine. No, no, it's sure, great. Sure, sure. Totally, you know, whatever, you know. And then um, got a call that morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were like, oh, shit. So we called Matt. And uh, Matt was kind of hoping or waiting in the wing there for us. Thank sure. goodness, you know. And, uh, so we were only able to shoot a little bit of stuff on that Friday. Uh, just like... I think we did maybe the library scene and then like a part of a scene out in the uh, parking ramps or whatever, sure. but it was, it was like, I mean, it was so cold. I, I had bought heated gloves just for that day. Cause I was like, shit, there's no way, you know, and like I had, had to take them off to use the camera. Right. But then I could put my hand back in there and warm them up. So we only got just like a couple little things shot that day. And then we ended up shooting all the stuff in the hotel suite on Friday and Sunday, or uh, sorry, Saturday and Sunday. And then we did one more day um, where we did all the outside stuff uh, to pick up what we couldn't do on Friday because we had, that little snafu. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like uh sounds like when I did my first when I did my uh short film for my uh final uh when senior year in college, I had the main guy the day of uh not be available. So I literally grabbed my roommate, who happened to be my buddy since middle school. I woke him up <laughs> and said, Hey, you don't have any lines to worry about, you just gotta walk scary. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> he was like okay fine i'll buy you lunch <laughs> right and you know this was my first feature film so it was like i i think you know most people who are in film are aware of some of the uh tragedies that can occur and yeah so my whole premise was to keep it really pared down because it's my first thing you know sure, and yeah. like minimal amount of characters right whatever and so um I was like, you know, this guy had been a friend and he was very you know, reassuring that he would be there. So I was like, you know, I got two main guys that shouldn't have to worry about. And then it just started like right towards the end, like, <laughs> oh, man, man. So uh, I try to, I, you know, like I'm working on another film, too. And there are some, it's a little it's a, actually quite quite a quite a bit bigger of a production than that was. But um, <laughs> it's uh you know, I'm trying to like keep it in a way that I, sure. I can hopefully, you know, manage some of those things if something occurs. But yeah, good times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fun of filmmaking. 
Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, it's, it was fun watching the location you picked though, because I, we were literally at that hotel, uh, for the Weird Al concert a couple of years ago. <laughs> so yeah. you're like going up the stairs and everything. And I'm like, holy crap. I was like, I was there. <laughs> like, I, I always, I always enjoy watching films in Wisconsin to see if I can, uh, pick where they're at uh right uh, right you know and uh in fact i think i was on the road where you have the phone toss at the end too i think i know where that road is uh do you what what, it's out on uh the let's see east side of madison yeah 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 yeah. over over towards like sun prairie yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I've done it. <laughs> so it's like I'm looking at it, it's going, Oh, I know that hotel, I know that part. So, right. uh, so, uh, what challenges did you have as far as, um, because it was your first one? I, I know some of the things as far as shooting outside in Wisconsin, it's not like LA, you don't necessarily need a permit, but it should be good to let law enforcement know you're going to be out there with a camera. But what about getting securing <laughs> your, uh, other locations was it a challenge um no and and i shot them all guerrilla style but i had done a lot of pre-scouting and like figuring out exactly where i could shoot and for like about how long i thought i could get away with before anybody you know so i found some and you know during the week down there it's less busy so that that was easier and you know, that time of year, it's also less busy because it's cold. So all of those things worked in my, my benefit. Um, but yeah, no, I just figured out where I could and where I thought it was like secluded enough that we could get away without, you know, causing too much commotion. And Well, I mean, the regular street seeds, obviously, but when you get to a bit of the climax of the film, would they actually need to do the job? I was looking at that going, Okay, you're in the state capitol. You're staging <laughs> the. I'm like, so <laughs> yeah, we were far enough away from it, and 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 now that part that was part of the writing for <laughs> my thought there was like you know like this is sort of an anticlimactic cl- climax, right? Like it's very, very um, you know, just matter of fact and done, and so you know that was part of the writing too was that like if you were going to do it, you'd do it that way and it would be and You're move done. on. Right. Right? right. So I thought I could get away with it, even though we had guns out on the street. <laughs> hey, it's open carry state, right? So yeah, like... that, that's right. You're fine. You're fine. You know. <laughs> and, and, and if it was cold enough, the cops would probably just say, yeah, no, I'm good. Hey, we'll just we'll, we'll come back to this later if we have right? to. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't we didn't like stand around, stick around there long enough. I don't sure. think for anybody to really, you know, s- say that there was something crazy going on. <laughs> well, I know I know hotels get really, a- a- at least f- from other folks I've talked to, hotels get really leery when you say, "Hey, I want to shoot a movie in your hotel," and they're like, "What kind of movie are you shooting?" Right. <laughs> Right. What, what's with all the equipment? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you say this scene had a prostitute in it? Um, <laughs> actress, actress, just. <laughs> Which I I loved the dialogue uh, in your script. Uh, now with your script, uh, was it a bit of collaborative? Did you uh, you know, did you stick to the dialogue real hard, or or did you give possibly the actors a little bit of wiggle room if they maybe uh, wanted to change a line or or do something a little different? they they did a pretty good job i mean because obviously there's a lot of like data and statistics and very (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. precise you know like there's a lot of information in there for you know when she's trying to make her point and and so forth like so she did an extraordinarily good job of you know she was right on on you know there were a couple little ad lib lines here or there that i did leave in and um mostly it, it's um the script there are a couple of spots the the tripping scene at the end sure. he's just kind of sure. going on a freestyle there um yeah i was just like yeah just whatever he's like just rambling basically so that's that's pretty much all matt um 
but yeah, it was uh, mostly the script. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and well, it, really, yeah. it well, was a. Uh, we we did have to have a little bit of uh, like. So I bought a, a, I got a TV, sure, and I hooked sure. my computer up to it, and I did have the script up on mm. the TV so that um, it would be easier for Matt, who had only had the script for like four days. So this is a, a fifty-page script, just you yeah. know, like full of dialogue, right? And so he had almost no time to memorize this thing. So that's what makes it even more impressive to me is that he was able to, you know, nail most of those lines. But uh, we did we did have a you know little prompter there so that in between takes could look sure. over and get a refresher very easily without having to like keep flipping through the script and stuff. But yeah. No, Matt was great. Uh, so was uh, did you know most of the people? I I mean, it's a small cast, but did you know most of these people, or or did you do a little bit of a casting search for some of your roles? Um, I the, well, the only person in the film that I knew beforehand was Doug. Okay. Um, right. then the other guy who was supposed to play the lead, we had worked on several music videos and. <laughs> couple couple of things i don't remember exactly what but so and we you know we're friends ish i thought <laughs> we're still kind of we exchange christmas cards so. <laughs> uh so but you know he wasn't in it so yeah in the end it ended up uh being uh you know we got matt and then um aaron rathbone was the last minute uh cast and i i did do a casting for um jenya mm -hmm. uh, for the prostitute oh, which i love the name sugar plum <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. like the yes. fairy what <laughs> <laughs> yeah when i when i got her audition i was like oh she gets it all mm -hmm. right like she really she really got it i was impressed so no, yeah. every everybody seemed to be on board and they they seemed to get it and get the vibe and that because with like you said heavy dialogue and especially with them not having a lot of time together they didn't have a whole lot of time ahead of time i imagine to build up like a chemistry or a report you know table read right. or whatnot you're pretty much right. show it upset you better know your lines we got to go uh in true right. fashion but that comes yeah, across we... on screen no, well i was just gonna say uh the chemistry comes across on screen really well yeah, they were they were great. They were great. Uh, we we did have a few Zoom rehearsals before, mm -hmm. but then, you know, the cast kind of changed a little. <laughs> right, and so that changes the dynamic a little. Obviously, Jen, Jen, Jenny and I had you know I had read for uh, Matt's character, and so we we did some rehearsing, and mm -hmm. and Doug and I did some rehearsing. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, were were most of these performers local, or did you fly? It was uh, uh, Jana. She the only one from L.A. Yeah, she was the only one from L.A. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt's in Milwaukee, and so is Doug actually. Uh, and then uh, Aaron is in Madison. And I, I ended up getting uh, Anthony Montoya to also play uh, just small character there at the end, and um, DJ Fusion. We had. We, we had known each other mm -hmm. for a while um, through music because he's DJ at the radio station. And so sure. I asked him if he'd want to do a small part or whatever. He was down, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works. Helps give that authenticity. Uh, it it had a very Tarantino feel to it. I hope you don't mind me saying that. <laughs> And it, 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 this felt like one of those Guy Ritchie Tarantino type of uh, films. Who would you say influences you with your filmmaking? Any of them, I or? Mean, yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely like Tarantino and Guy Ritchie and Wes Anderson and David Lynch and like you know some I suppose Seth Rogen kind of humor and I like the Coen Brothers. So mm -hmm. you know it's like I'm. I'm sure in movie watching, I pulled from, sure. you know, mm -hmm. all of these films that I've seen. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so did your did your experience as a as working on music video 
help with kind of the rushed shooting schedule that you had here? Because I, I've heard that like shooting music videos, you're usually on a time crunch. You only got the talent so much time before they got to go off to like either their next concert or whatever mansion or whatnot. Yeah, I think it probably did help because I've been really used to like, all right, we've got, you know, eight hours to do this thing, right? And it's just like running around, moving lights. And so, yeah, it was, I was more or less, I wasn't, I was prepared, but I wasn't quite that prepared because <laughs> doing it for like 14 hours is a different story. Yeah, <laughs> I was real sore by the end of the day because it, you know, like I didn't have a gaffer or anything mm -hmm. else and the sound guy was running the other camera. So, it, I mean, like I kept it pared down as possible because there's only so much space in there for one, right? right. And like money and and everything and so uh yeah it was me setting up lights and props and everything when and we got into the room later than we were supposed to mm -hmm. um they hadn't had didn't have it cleaned yet and so like we got in there like two hours later than we had anticipated so then it was just like a mad dash of me setting up props and decorating you know like getting the lights up and and then it was like it was just go 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 the whole time. So it was it was a little little much, I think. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty much like, well, it's, this is just a few days. We can plow through this and and get it done, you know. But, you kind kind of threw yourself into the deep end of the pool for a future film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, it was. It, if I had had to do that for say eight or 10 days or something i would be dead but <laughs> <laughs> i felt like you know all right we can just go for a couple days and knock through these things that we absolutely have to get or whatever um but hopefully the next one will be a little less like that i've scheduled it out sure so there's some buffers and it's a bigger shoot it takes place it takes place across the state and even into uh, minnesota uh, so we'll be traveling and <laughs> all of that but fun fun uh, yeah. so i imagine you, you you're planning for a little bit bigger crew than just you and the sound well, guy being the uh behind the camera crew <laughs> yeah yeah there's um there's I think like five days of it that are sort of like offshoot days where we'll just shoot like a scene sure. that day. They're kind of like one off, like this character comes in and we'll do that. But then there's a there's a six day stretch where everybody's together for the entire six days. And um there will for that I'll I'll have some extra hands and mm -hmm another dedicated camera guy <laughs> <laughs> need that coverage right <laughs> yeah. yeah it was definitely rough like especially for mitch who was doing sound because you know he's dealing with that and then going over <laughs> to make sure he's got the camera going and everything so well you, you, your, a... your sound was good so he he did a good job because yeah, he, did, just... he did a great job I mean, especially with a film that's heavy in dialogue, you want at least the sound, if nothing else, to to sound good. Because I've seen, I've seen really decently produced indie films only falter because their audio was right. not good. So it's like, yeah, this set's great. I can't hear anything they're saying. Right, right. Yeah, and you know, I mean, like it sounded good out out the the gate. But it's still, you know, a little bit dynamic. And sure. I did a lot, a lot, a lot of going in and just like, I mean, I basically cut it up word by word to make sure that everything was so that there weren't peaks and so many peaks and valleys, right? Um, I didn't want to compress it too hard because I was worried about some of the room noise in there. And so anyway. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it turned out pretty good. It was a lot of work, but um, putting putting your music experience into right into work. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, pretty much was like, all right, let's just make sure this sounds good because everybody always 
you know, bitches about it if this sounds bad. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, it's one of those things where you would think visuals, but it's actually the audio more so than anything that'll distract people. When I've talked to people too, it's like, yeah, it didn't look that great, but at least it sounded fantastic. I could hear everything. You know, the sound design <laughs> right. was great. So, and I'm a lighting guy. So like <laughs> when I watch movies, I look, I look for at the lighting, you know, I'm like, oh, that's terrible. Like who did that? Right. And so that distracts me a lot, but you know, as long as the sound is in there and it's like audible and not like, whoa, that got really loud all of a sudden, then it's fine. But <laughs> Well, that that went from camera mic to lav back to camera mic. I could tell that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we we did use all labs, so that helped a lot. I I thought, and that's the plan for the next one. I. Yeah, yeah. that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> well, I mean, the even on a limited budget now, though, it is amazing the equipment out there for audio wise because of. I always say it's the double-edged sword. The one thing that came out of the COVID for video production folks is how much suddenly there were advances in all kinds of production tools because people were all working from home or making stuff at home or yeah. podcasting suddenly exploded. So suddenly all this right. you know, pro equipment came down in price and those uh, like road cordless mics and that are, they're really good for 200 bucks. It's like, wow. Yeah, they're not too bad. I, I did get some Sennheisers because I mm. that's what we used for the last one and I thought they sounded great and they worked great and they connected well and <laughs> all of that. So um just gotta make sure the battery's charged. Let's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I but I also uh I got some of those GoPro road GoPro yeah, yeah. Tubes or whatever. Uh so I, those are gonna sort of be like a little bit of a backup. I nice. think if you know if something goes wrong, um, I did have some connectivity issues with them at the last shoot that I did. It was the first time I had used them, so I don't know. I've got to play play with them a little more. <laughs> have, Doug is a sound guy too, so he he's the one who was doing the sound for the thing we did a couple of weeks ago, and he was having some issues with one of them. So wow. I don't know. I have to play with it a little bit. <laughs> That's the way it usually is with the equipment. You got to play with it. It's it out of the box it's not all the same uh right. you, you get its little tweaks and and nuances which uh you had prop we you had weapons in here uh uh were they all props and, and, or did they just did, was that from a collection yeah. cuz you had a wide variety i was like oh yeah you know when yeah, you they... when you show up as the uh arms dealer <laughs> yeah they were mo yeah they were all i mean yeah. props as in they weren't like they wouldn't fire a real bullet but a couple of them were like those air pistols yeah. right? so nothing that would kill anybody <laughs> <laughs> maybe put an eye out but <laughs> Good. what do they call airsoft that's, airsoft that's there you go yeah, yeah. I, I did for one video use because they were like good close friends i did mm -hmm. use a real real one but mm -hmm. you know you don't want to take that. You don't. You don't want that. That opens up a whole bag of worms. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'll. Probably, and it, it was. Uh, it wasn't used as as like a firing weapon or anything. It was sure. just like a prop on a table. Um, you know, to sort of help give on authenticity to the, to the to the sh shot. But still, it makes it right. okay. We got the shot. Can we get this out of here, please? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would never use a uh, live even even blanks. I don't think anymore. Yeah. I I forget who it was that was talking about that. It was a big director, and he was just like, "There's just really no reason to use a, a real gun that can fire anymore because we've got like." effects that are you know after effects that are so much better and some of the fake ones have re, you know the slide fires or yeah. whatever it is i can't think of it right now but mm -hmm. yeah he basically just said but it's more expensive for the studios to have to go in and do all that effects than it is for them to just buy a couple of hundred dollar two hundred dollar oh, yeah and somebody shoot blanks right like that saves a ton of time ton of money so that's why they still use them but 
Uh, typical Hollywood always boils down to money, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> this this next one I'm working on, man. Oh God, it's like, and I'm not like I don't have a studio budget, right? So sure. this is just at this point, it's pretty much me trying to hobble all everything together and getting a few sponsors here and there and stuff. Still working on sponsors. If anybody wants to sponsor a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I was I was gonna ask, uh, were you gonna plan on crowdfunding or whatnot for your next project, or are you still gonna try to just get investors and finance? Because I always love this asking filmmakers this, especially indie filmmakers, because everybody has a different experience or answer for crowdfunding. Right. Yeah, uh, I did try to crowdfund a little bit for the last one, and I don't really know what I'm doing with crowdfunding. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, and it's a lot of work. It was a lot of work to like edit up the videos and shoot the videos and, um, you know, come up with all the ideas and put it together and put everything online. Like it took, you know, over a week's worth of time, probably just to like do all that. <laughs> and my reward was very, very little. <laughs> um, so I, I don't, I don't really, I'm not, that's, that's just not my world, I guess. Like, I don't understand how to get a lot of people to see it and and like all my friends are broke so who's who's gonna <laughs> donate? I, don't, I don't have a, i didn't come from like a rich family so i can't be like hey dad can i have five grand you know like um so yeah i mean i i'm gonna try and do one again but i'll probably keep it pretty simple and sure the first one <clears throat> they you know, because I had done a little bit of like research on, well, what the, what do I do here? Like, right. to, and you know, they're like, shoot it like your film's going to look so that it looks nice and has the feel of your film and they get an idea of what you can do and blah, blah, blah. And so I did. And it was, you know, whatever. <laughs> this one, I might just hold up a cell phone and be like, give me money, fuckers. I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, I would probably I would probably give more money to a campaign like that to where a filmmaker just goes, eh, hi, I'm making a film. Give me some money, fuckers. All right. I I'd probably do that because at least be more honest. But no, I've heard of the work that, you know, and you see some of these campaigns where there's so many tears and you're just like, man, you, you know, you don't think about the work that's got to go into that daily updates and, yeah. and keeping track of that. And. And, yeah. and I do have a little more help on this one. I, I do have four producers on this. So, um, you know, I've got other people helping work helping. on little things too. I mean, I'm doing a lot of the day to day and like putting everything together and putting, getting stuff lined up and all that. Um, it, I started writing the script again, I think in November and, uh, I got that finished in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, then uh yeah just started <laughs> putting together things and i had already before i wrote the script had most of the cast mm -hmm. together or or at least like had them say like i'm yes i would like to do it i would like to be in it right so i was able to kind of I, I wrote for the people that i, I had available sure. or that wanted to participate i guess <laughs> which which is more uh, to me it's more fun because then you get a like in some in some ways i think it's fun to like look at other people's past bodies of work mm -hmm. and then find a way to make them stretch you know what i mean like let's let's have them do something that i haven't seen them really do before and you know maybe i haven't seen all their work so maybe i'm missing out and i, I actually <laughs> did play that role in some other film but for a lot of them, like what I what I have seen from watching reels and watching some you know different clips and things, um, I think it's I think it's fun to kind of be like, cause I, I just I really hate that how badly um, casting agents stereotype. Mm -hmm. You know, like people aren't we're messy, <laughs> we're messy <laughs> like. Where you have nurses that are covered in tattoos but you never see that on a commercial or post film yeah. you know what i mean like so i don't know i just like like stretching it and pushing boundaries and i think it's more fun yeah I, it's it's interesting that because of the 
time that we now live in where everybody's always, you know, the the big word is diversity and, and getting different representation of all different types and body forms and everything. Casting directors still seem to be falling back to a specific look usually. And you're just like, yeah. you know, that's why we're always surprised when you're like, oh, they cast this person. That's interesting. Uh, but it's few and far between yet. And that's sad because you would think nowadays, like someone with tattoos, they went, who was it? I forgot who it was. Some actress, a famous actress has like 20 or 30 some tattoos and she got them all covered for the red carpet premiere of a film. I'm like, yeah, why? <laughs> I think I did see some posted about that. I don't remember who it was. Yeah, now, I forgot but... who it was, too, but. I'm like, the, yeah, if... I mean, ca casting, I don't know. Yeah, I, I see a lot. And, you know, I hear hear people talk, too, about, like, oh, they don't really fit because they don't look like, well, what the fuck does, like, I see all kinds of people who don't <laughs> like, look like a model. Uh, Yeah, that's why I really liked your casting of Sugar Plum, because uh, it, you know, um, it went a little bit against uh, what you're normally used to seeing in Hollywood for that role. Uh, yeah. and, and I appreciated that quite a bit. And I loved her performance as well. I mean, the way she rattled off the stats of that, it was just great. So it was great. Your your whole cast, I really enjoyed. Very talented folks. Uh, you know, your actor, producer, director. Which do you like more now that you've done so much of it? Which would you would you like to do the most? Well, I really like it. I would like to do more acting, I mm -hmm. think, but um, I, I will get to do my fair share of directing because everyone wants a camera pointed at them, right? Sure. Like, so <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard to find someone to point a camera at. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, dire directing is fun. Um, producing, producing feels like painting a picture, I think, you know, or creating a piece of art, right? Like I get to, in the way I've been doing it, writing it from beginning and sure coming up with wardrobe and set design and like painting this picture in my brain and then trying to bring that to life is fun. I, I like that, but, um, and it's another way to get to act too. I like acting. I think that's a fun, I don't know. I like, I like it all. Um, I wouldn't for the most part, I wouldn't go direct or produce someone else's project uh -huh. unless I was getting paid. Sure. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, no one would. <laughs> right. right. Like for me, for me, well, I mean, there's a lot of people who are right. kind of like, you know, come work on this thing and like collaborate or whatever, but it's just too much work. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's sort of like for me, especially now, I like the idea of creating the whole thing and getting to to put the finishing touches on the picture, you know. Get, get, getting your getting your vision out there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much well that's fantastic uh what's can you speak just briefly what your next project is and uh where people can uh, keep yeah. up about it not, not a lot it's called sanguine teeth on a driftless road uh and it's about vampires but that's pretty nice. much and it's a comedy so sure. i love that title i love that title uh is there, is there a place where they can uh follow you for your uh, yeah, Austin Galante on Instagram, and I think it's Austin Galante on um, Facebook and TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there will be updates on the Marshmallow uh, Napalm Entertainment. Uh, I think it might just be, yeah, I think it's Marshmallow Napalm, mm -hmm. Napalm Entertainment on Facebook. Um, and then I have a website for it marshmallow I, I love that name too i love that name too i'm a big i'm a big fan of the movie called the stuff so it reminds me of a bit of oh, oh you know the stuff i don't but the name is funny oh, if you get a chance check out the movie the stuff it's a great b movie it's got danny aiello as a small role in it it's uh, basically about uh it, it's kind of a play off of the blob but it makes a statement okay. about commercialism. Uh, whereas okay. the stuff is this white, like ice cream type material, but there's something nefarious about it. And it's, it's <laughs> uh, I might it's, have to find this and check it out. 
It's it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And what was also what I uh, will say is brilliant. I really enjoyed your script for uh, Sweet Killing Machines. What's next for it? Is it going to streaming? Is it out yet on streaming? It is. It's on streaming now. I think you can uh, you can rent it on marshmallownapalm.com. You can rent it on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. uh, you can watch it on a few other streaming sites. I think with commercials. It just sort of it just got picked up like three weeks ago or nice. something. So it's I think. Sure. Being sprink sprinkled about as we um, talk, uh, it it's it was picked up by Apple TV, but it's not on there yet. And I read it can take uh, up to twelve weeks, maybe. <laughs> it's that's a real nightmare trying to promote it because you just don't like. And I don't have Apple TV, so I right. I didn't even know. I just thought it was you know i googled it and was like oh and it's on there too and then <laughs> I like promoted it and people started trying to watch it and they're like i can't find it so i was like wait what so i started looking and it said oh i can take up to 12 weeks so oh that's fun yeah i, yeah. I, I had an indie filmmaker john pata he just he finished his film black mold and it was a surprise to everybody suddenly it showed up on tubi they were they were doing a festival run and all of a sudden they're like oh yeah hey it's on tubi now like <laughs> yeah because they were going yeah. through a, a a studio and you know uh and okay. apparently the studio put it out on TV while they're on their festival run so right yeah i i was gonna kind of wait and then i decided like it from you know mm -hmm. it could take a while to mm -hmm. get things there and so i sort of just started and figured yeah, it might it might, well. it might pop up somewhere because I, I think I, I think I still have it in like roughly 30 festivals or sure. 20 25 festivals I don't know I haven't looked in a while but um yeah, it's just like know. it's just just like Hollywood the films in the theater and it's on streaming so there you go see there you yeah go. <laughs> exactly I mean people are gonna watch it or they're not you know what's the matter if it's at a festival <laughs> yeah. those people aren't they didn't go rent no. it from Amazon <laughs> they never heard of it you're fine <laughs> and you can always use the streaming copy as a springboard to help promote this next project coming out and hopefully get some financers. And uh, I hope uh, we could get a chance to speak again when that project comes out. I'd love to take a look at it and have you back and talk about that yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe next time we'll get a couple other cast members in here yeah. and we'll do it together. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Well, thank you, Austin, very much. Yes, folks, check it out. Sweet Killing Machines, uh, and Sweet, S-U-I-T-E, like a hotel suite. I love the little play on words for that as well. And uh, yeah, links for all of that stuff will be in the body of this podcast. So thank you again, Austin. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I really appreciate it.